In the turbulence of US politics, one man has emerged as the disruptive force of 2023. With the finesse of a bull in a china shop, the orchestrator of an ouster of a speaker, causing a three-week standstill, and this year's politician of the year, Matt Gates. What has his legislative contribution been? Non-existent. Amid the allegations of an ethics investigation into sex trafficking, Mr. Gates has prioritised personal vendettas over governance, paralysing the House for a year. Theatrics extended beyond personal vendettas. He aligned himself with Trump's baseless claims, attempting to rewrite January 6 as an act of martyrdom. As he eyes higher office and now threatens new speaker Mike Johnson, Gates symbolizes the Trump-led GOP descent into chaos. In Gates' political circus, revenge is a dish best served cold, taking center stage and turning the house into chaotic theatrics. Gates' claims this dubious distinction, and this story is from The Hill by Juan Williams. There's not much more to say on this. So, Infidel, Matt Gates, Politician of the Year. Words <laughs> you ever thought you'd hear said to you? As laughable as it is, uh, I think there's a certain level of truth that <laughs> the article really brought into fruition when it said... He is a living monument to an era of elected Republican officials with no interest in governing. And that's what we do see, uh, not, not just with him. I, I feel like a broken record sometimes talking about how bad these people are at governing. But I realize that I may have been completely wrong. It, it appears that they may just have no interest in governing, which is something completely different. You know, and you mentioned him wasting on an entire legislative session on his pride, ego, vendettas. And of course, his fundraising skills don't don't forget his ability to raise money. Now, to, to stand out in this churning cesspool that we call the GOP caucus in the House, it does take a lot. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know what his plan is. Uh, his as, as you mentioned, is his fealty to Trump makes everything uncertain. You know, this. This Gates MAGA ride that he's on is really more of a traffic jam. You know, all the, all, all the energy is dedicated to honking the horn and hitting the brakes. There, there, there's not actually anything done other than making a lot of noise. You know, he's, he's perpetuated all these baseless claims, and, and, and they're the same ones over and over again about the, the, the insurrectionists. Uh, you know, they're more focused on image and, and, and not actual leadership. Because what we have to remember is honking the horn is hard work. You know, <laughs> forget actually doing any of the work. That's <laughs> that requires a whole different level of responsibility. And when it comes down to this shit show clown car, it's hard to argue that Gates he plays a mean horn. Now, Scott. <laughs> What do you think about his horn playing ability? <laughs> what do I? I'll tell you what I think about his horn playing. No, but when when I saw the headline here, Matt Getz is the 2023 Politician of the Year. You know, it it it. Uh, po I thought Poe's Law, right? Poe's Law says that there's, in a nutshell, that there's nothing so ridiculous that you can say that it it would be so ridiculous that there's not somebody that believes it, right? There's going to yeah. be somebody that actually buys it. So when I saw this, I was like, you know, my first thought was. Isn't Juan Williams like a card carrying Democrat? Doesn't he like, <laughs> I mean, he's definitely on, on, on the left side, but he still is. So, so don't worry about that. But my second thought was that this was like the Razzies, you know, the Razzies are like the bizarro Oscars where they, <laughs> they give awards to these horrible, horrible movies. And so I thought, Oh, that's gotta be it. Right. Cause Matt, I mean, it does seem like a little bit of a stretch. Matt gets the, the 2023 politician of the year. But, but then when I was reading the art article, I got to the end and that's, it was, there's kind of this, uh, this ominous uh, solemnity in, in the room when I was reading. And, and so the last little bit was, as we look to 2024 
Getz and other Trump acolytes make up a disturbing preview of the future of the GOP. For that reason, Getz is the 2023's politician of the year. So it's not like he was saying that he's so effective as a politician personally or as, as a great human being or anything like that. What he was saying is, here's this is the zeitgeist of, of what's happening here, of this modern GOP. And so I, I, I think he was trying to be a little pr provocative with his headline when he was talking about, yeah. you know, politician of the year or you never know. Right. Nowadays, mostly editors make the headline. So so maybe he didn't even have anything to do with it. But um, uh, I think he meant it as kind of a warning, a warning sign. You know, and I, I hate to be the one in the room to bring up the Nazis, but Adolf Hitler was Time magazine's man of the year in 1938. So I, I think that's kind of what we're looking at here. It's more of a an indication that uh, not necessarily him as an individual, but well, and certainly he has had some effects, right? He's managed to stall lots of things. And so um, he's really, he's an expert at drag, he's a good foot dragger. But um, but I, I think representing that, you know, here's what here's what's coming, here's, here's what's going on. Uh, you know, he kind of puts that up as like the poster child of, of this, mo of this movement. He's the, he's the, um, the corrosive concentration of this infantile, careless, thoughtless, uh, spiteful, uh, the greedy, right? The me, 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 fuck all of you mentality, right? And so I, I think that uh, when Juan Williams says this kind of thing, he's saying, watch out, be careful what you wish for. This is what's coming. And I, and I think we should, we should take heed there, right? We can't uh, as an as America, I'm not just talking about us as the people on the show or us as an atheist or, or I, I think us as a country, as as Americans and as, you know, and and in other contexts, as people of the uh, citizens of the larger world, we need to we need to take some responsibility here and we need to we need to be the kind of people that we want to be. And, and so I think he's saying, here's what you're going. It's up to you. You know, it's yours to lose. Right. And, and I'll finish here with a quote from Martin Luther King, Jr. He said. The ultimate tragedy is not the oppression and cruelty by the bad people, but the silence over that by the good people. And I and I, I know that there's going to be um, people on the left side of the aisle that are going to be, uh, you know, that have that are calling him out on some of these things. I'd love it if there was you know a little more of that happening. It is happening somewhat on the right side of the aisle, uh, but I'd like to see uh, a little more of that. Eli, what are what are your thoughts here? So I, I agree with Juan Williams, but I agree for a different reason than you. I think that the reason Juan Williams named Matt Getz his politician of the year is because Matt Getz was able to prevent harmful legislation from being passed, you know, legislating like people's bodies or, or reproductive laws or bathrooms or whatever hmm. weird like lizard person shit they're doing in Washington these <laughs> days. He was able to stop them for a whole year from accomplishing anything that's going to cause, well, I shouldn't say anything, but accomplishing things that would have undoubtedly caused harm to marginalized groups. Mm. Uh, and I think anybody who does that, if I have to pick a politician of the year, I think that's a, that's a good candidate. Um, so are, are you saying he was messing up a bad machine? Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, that's kind of what it, yeah. That's okay. like how, what I kind of interpreted it as, yeah. Huh. Uh, are you saying that, Matt Gates has seen stuff that's politically disadvantageous and has acted in the way he has to prevent politically disadvantageous things from occurring. I don't think that was his goal. I just think that was uh, an ancillary benefit of his petty vendettas. Um, and uh, it, it, it did kind of seem, speaking of that, it did kind of seem that like to oust, you know, a, a Republican, Matt Gates is a Republican, to oust a Republican speaker in a Republican led house seems like just, just as for like, as a revenge for not initiating an investigation, but just mm -hmm. choosing not to stop an investigation into Gates. It, it just seems like a really kind of like dollar store, Tom Clancy villain sort of move. Like, uh, to, Hey, to... now you're doing dollar stores disservices. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the, you know the the true like not the ones that go up to like five dollars, but the ones that stay like one fifty. Oh, per, in Britain, yeah, Poundland. Sure, yeah. <laughs> so, but I really that means it, something different in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was the Ali fight, Lewis Tyson. <laughs> you know. So then, I'm, 
and, and the other thing that I found is that um, USA Today reported on uh, the 7th of December that some of the detractors in Congress have floated the idea of, of booting him out, um, which is uh, and actually and also that 57 percent of Florida voters disapprove of his performance in Congress this year. And that, that actually is sort of impressive because his approval rating was 21 and his was 21 percent and his disapproval was 57 percent. So he's down that extra 22 percent disapproval that he should be or that, uh, that he should be missing. But his unfavorabilities the, the are high, as they say. Yeah. The interesting thing about ousting him from Congress, though, is that there is a sort of precedent in Congress that um, – the uh, they don't expel a member who has not been convicted of, of a crime, and that was oh, I'm the case sorry they threw George, that away. Uh, up until George Santos Adams. was expelled, yeah, exactly mm -hmm. earlier this year. And so it turns out that uh, according to the same article, many of the House Republicans, and this comes from uh, a confidential uh, source in Congress, as they reported, uh, many of the House Republicans who are still angry with Gates for his actions this year voted Santos out, not because they wanted Santos out, but because they wanted to overturn the precedent just so that there was one less reason not to expel Matt Gates whenever the report comes out about his allegations. So now they can say, well, we can expel him. He, he's been causing all this mm. trouble. We're mad at him. And he's got these allegations. There's no longer a precedent that you must be convicted of a crime in order mm. to be expelled. So, and, and, and they're saying that that was the reason. It wasn't a, about Santos or, or the reason that they were expelling him. It was about being able to later on expel Matt Gates. So putting, opening the door, exactly. right? Opening the door. Okay. Exactly. Hmm. Um, so but this, he, was, uh, but this, but this is this is ironic though. This is ironic though. If you're going to start down this path, it's it's what's we're seeing with impeachment. Impeachment was used once in the yeah. 19th century, once in the 20th century, and it could be used multiple times in the 21st century. Once you start to remove that pin can you put the pin back in to stop it from becoming oh we don't like this person they've left the conference mm -hmm. oh we don't like yeah. this person they've left the caucus oh we're in the minority we're in the majority in the house we don't like the president let's impeach the president yeah where does it go i mean andrew jackson was impeached over the removal of the secretary of state for war Bill Clinton, because he couldn't keep his trousers up in the Oval Office and then lied about it. And Donald Trump over dealings in Ukraine. Those are serious things. But now, as of the day of recording, the House voted to formalize the impeachment inquiry of Joe Biden. He doesn't really understand why. And just saying on your point there, OK, they want to get rid of Matt Gates mm -hmm. because... They don't like him. These were nuclear options prior to the removal of George Santos. It was insurrectionists that fought on the side of the Confederacy and two people who were in jail <laughs> who had been expelled. When, and these handbrakes are there for a very good reason. They have a big label on them. Do not use unless essential break glass at peril yeah. once you throw that sign away what's to stop you know a now super it's just majority. break glass what's to stop <laughs> say uh, what happened in the 1930s when democrats had two-thirds majorities in both houses what was to have stopped them from simply turning around and expelling every republican that precedent and guess which way matt gates voted on santos he voted not to expel and stated publicly that the reason he stated on the House floor that the reason for his vote to not expel Santos was determined by his desire to protect that precedent uh, that you need to be convicted of a crime before you can be expelled from Congress. And it sounds like suspiciously like he's just trying to cover his own ass. He wanted that precedent in place because he knew his time was coming. He knew he spent the whole year pissing everybody off and that this report was coming out and that if they had the chance to, they were going to kick him out. He doesn't want to lose his job, but it yeah. sounds like yeah. he's, he's but kind of Matt Gates way is <laughs> Matt Gates swims in irony in this whole scenario. And so uh, does this swimming of irony 
get stranger because the reason that McCarthy was ousted was because he had Democrats vote with him. The way Gates ousted McCarthy was by using the Democrats to remove him. I've got to say, I, I don't think that the, the Republicans are going to oust Gates. I, I think it would be a huge mistake for them to pull the knives out. If they do that. Well, he has this great award on his shelf now, right? He's yeah, politician well, of the year. They can't throw away that. That's like yeah, well, cash money in the bank right there. Well, I, I've <laughs> got to say that the politician of the year uh, that we're talking about here is more along the lines of Jonathan Swift talking about a modest proposal. Uh, there's, it's, it's like giving satire. Ted Baxter anchor of the year. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's it, Ooh, no flashback. one in their right mind. So uh, I, I don't see them doing that. If they do, it's on because there are so many repressed problems in, within the party that they start s stabbing each other virtually. It won't be long and we'll have the old Roman Senate outside because they're very mad when he gets down between it. <laughs> They're not getting along at all. Mm -mm. They are on opposite sides. You've got your your Gates, your MAGA. You've got your people who are you know, the corporate Republicans, the ones who do the bidding of the, of the corporations. And really, I think that's what Juan is most concerned about here is the representation of the corporate Republican Party and corporations, not so much beyond a party, but in general, uh, I think that it's a, a desire to keep the status quo. Now, when the solution to getting out of the status quo is met, well, I, I get it. That's, that's not much of a solution. Uh, having said that, uh, what we're seeing here is, in my opinion, the degradation of the U.S. Republic. We, we're, we're going, if we continue down this path, I do not think the author's wrong. We will see this country in an absolutely disastrous situation. But the only bright side is, as Eli brought up, at least the polls are pointing that the voters are getting tired of his, his trash too. And that is really what counts. We can say what we want. The corporations can say what they want. All the other party chairs and everything can have opinions. But at the end of the day, if the voters are tired of Matt, they'll get rid of Matt. I don't see the Republicans doing it in the House, though, especially not with the razor thin majority they have, uh, even with DeSantis as the governor of Florida. I, I just don't see that happening. I, I see him sitting there to the end of the term and letting the letting the voters do it for them. Scott? Oh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. So, so, the, but this whole thing is all the, this whole article is focused around Matt Getz being named this. I mean, Juan Williams is not, you know, any kind of governing body or doesn't represent an organization other than his own, you know, his own uh, stance as a political pundit. Right. And so, but if we take what he's saying uh, at face value, and if we do assume that, I mean, there's lots of different reasons why he could be, you know, why it could have been his name at the top here. And it's it's really interesting talking about all those different little permutations. But if we assume that it was intended as a, as a warning and that uh, he thinks that um, that this is our future, right, that the that this is the future of of American politics happening right here in front of us. Um, and, and this is more of a question of human nature than anything else. But I just want to ask you all. Where do you think we're heading? What What do you think is going to happen? Infidel, you already talked about how, uh, you know, you you think that, or at least you you your assessment of Williams's take on it is that we're heading to a dark place. Eli, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. What do you, Where do you think? Uh, are we in a nosedive? And if so, can we pull out? Yeah, I mean, I I do have concerns that the sort of theocratic. Uh, a conservative government that you know Ryan what we talked about with Ryan Walters that that um, that that is sort of I think a lot of even like Democrats are getting are, are not happy with Joe Biden and are kind of looking for alternative options to like Democratic nominees I think and um, if if you know these uh, Republican um, 
uh, politicians that start to uh, that that have ideas like this, like Matt Getz might have, or or, or, or Ryan Walters, um, just the way things are going. I think if these people start to come into greater power or or the, the most most power, I think we're we are kind of in a in a dark place. I, I I worry about being an atheist in a country that in, in a Republican country. I do honestly sometimes. Phoebe, what do you think? Well, you just got to look at the people who were below Matt Gates on the Oof. list. Hmm. I mean, it was very Loam. nearly. Can you, can it you was go very lower nearly... than Loam? Is there anything lower than Loam? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do have this spinning core of the earth, and that spinning core of the earth was very nearly the slanging match between Lauren Bobert and Marjorie okay, Taylor Greene right. on the House floor, for crying I'm out loud. I'm sold. <laughs> I mean, that slanging match hmm. was something to behold. And I mean, that's the Freedom Caucus. Right. I mean, this is the tail wagging the dog at the moment. And I think it's the flea on the tail of the dog <laughs> wagging the whole system. Pretty much. <laughs> but here's the thing. I think that McCarthy was a reasonable politician for what passes as reasonable nowadays. In that he knew that any Freedom Caucus budget spending bill would just be chucked out by the Senate. The Senate wouldn't entertain it. The Senate wouldn't entertain what was known as the unclean budget bill. And the only budget bill or stopgap resolution, the continuing resolutions that the Senate would entertain were the clean ones. And Matt Gates doesn't care about that, as far as I can see. And the Freedom Caucus in general don't seem to care about that. They've forgotten who the quote-unquote real enemy to the House of Representatives is. Somebody once said, I can't remember who said this, freshman Democrat walked in and said, where's the enemy? I want to meet the Republicans. The senior Democrat goes, no, 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 they're the opposition. The enemy are down the other end and they're called the Senate. <laughs> and I think that that's what's been lost. The house is now eating itself alive at points. 17, 18, 19 ballots to elect a speaker. The Republican conference having three different nominees for the speakership in one day. This is not a failure of governance. This is not a lack of governance. This is incompetence of governance, as far as I'm concerned. And Matt Gaggs is the epitome of this. And quite frankly, I don't think it's an ironic title. I think he really is this year's Politician of the Year. And Politician of the Year don't necessarily mean you've done great things like you have stared down a storm a strom thurmond filibuster in the senate or you have guided through magical legislation being a politician is not necessarily doing what's good for the country it's playing politics and matt gates played mm, it better than any other person okay he i see he did in fact and fidel what's your what's your thought on this are we is this a doom and gloom scenario here I don't think so. Uh, I, I I see a lot of options where this goes south, but I also see that the more exposure that people like Matt and some of the other people that we talk about on a regular basis here, the more exposure they get, that appeal, that new car smell, that that shiny luster of something new goes away, and you realize that well. They weren't the same as everybody else. They were actually worse. And so I, I really think that what we're going to see is what I would want to call buyer's remorse. You know, people had a great idea of what they wanted. They went out and voted for some people. They got these people in office. And somebody mentioned arm flinging and Bobert. Well, I wasn't going to go there, but I was going <laughs> to leave that part out. But, you know, the bottom line is, is that, they're they're totally incompetent they they have no desire there's no desire whatsoever to actually govern to do anything actually constructive and i think that we're going to see people say maybe that's not what i want 
that's not what I'm looking for. And, and that'll be a good thing overall for all of us. Scott? Here's a real question. Can I invoke my local lemon law? I, I, look, I'm all for it. I'm with it. But, but would, would this fall into the conversation of uh, getting someone out of office without due process? But then again, it is a lemon law. Maybe so. I don't know. Is Matt Getz part of our future? If he is, I'm sure we'll talk about it here on the nonprofits and you can find more of us right there.